Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in again to another episode of CivilianTacticalWeapons.com. This will actually be the last episode before Christmas here, so I want to go ahead and wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Um, not a happy holidays. I live in the United States. I believe in tradition. It's Christmas. Damn it. So, um, gonna after saying that, what I want to do is actually talk about what, we're gonna, what we came here to talk about today. This is actually called the Burris Shot Cam. Um, it's actually not designed for the HK-45. Uh, one of the guns it is designed for is the Smith & Wesson MMP. Uh, mine's actually off getting uh, some trigger work done on it. So uh, I don't have mine around, so I actually stuck it on the HK-45. There is a uh, special holster designed to hold the gun and this uh, shot cam um, designed for most of the Glock series. Um, I think a Ruger 345, um, the Smith & Wesson MMP line, and the Beretta PX4 series. Um, I think they're going to be adding some additional guns too, but mainly it's designed, the holster option is really designed for law enforcement. So what they did was look at the different types of guns that law enforcement use, and that's kind of where they um, geared their, uh, their holster development. So what is this device? Um, this device in a nutshell is actually, if you look here carefully, there's a laser option on here, a light, and there's actually a camera in here. Um, so what's happening here is within this camera you've got here, the camera f uh, fires everything at, uh, shoots everything at 640 by 480 resolution. Um, the camera, the nice thing about this particular camera is uh, it actually records video too. So in this particular gun, what I'm doing is I'm recording uh, um, video, uh, I'm recording all the sound, and really what it does is it helps an officer in the event of uh, you know they have to draw their draw it from the holster. The holster is specially designed with a magnet system, so as the gun is pulled from the holster, it will automatically turn on. So this camera would actually go ahead and record the entire incident. So if you're sitting there and dictating to a suspect, you know, hands on the ground, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, you know, drop your weapon, whatever the scenario may be, it's recording the entire incident from the gun's point of view. Um, a lot of police departments will have the little periscope cameras on the top of the periscope video systems on the top of the squad cars, which is great if you aimed it at the particular area where the incident's going to take place. But if the uh, initial stop or incident goes well beyond the view of the front of the car, you really don't have any uh, recording of what happened in the incident. The nice thing about this is you actually have, in a court of law, this entire incident is now fully recorded. Um, and can be used to protect the officer in the case of uh, you know, you've got an overzealous uh, defense attorney. So the laser light combo on this uh, does have a couple of downsides. One, uh, this is kind of throws the balance of the gun off. So if you are looking at this, a couple things to note is I would strongly recommend that uh, you do take this out to the range and shoot it quite a lot to get used to the balance difference. Uh, when I first uh, dropped the Burris cam on it and was shooting it, it actually was uh, throwing off my shooting uh, initially. It was not something I was uh, um, accustomed to. So what, uh, what I recommend you do is if you do look at this, um, definitely go ahead and, and uh, try test shooting it. Um, the other thing is uh, from a law enforcement standpoint, I mean this is really you know 21st century type technology or whatever. where. I see this type of technology expanding further and further. Right now, uh, the shot cam is a, is a relatively large device, I would say. Um, the weight balance is a little off. If they could shrink this down another 30%, to 35%, uh, whereas it would actually be more of the same size and configuration as a regular standard tactical light, um, I would actually prefer it uh, myself, but, uh, you know, of course there's a yeah, you know, there's a uh, battery system in here, so the battery is designed to be able to handle uh, a little over a week uh, actually running on standby. Uh, I think it's actually a week to two weeks. So what's nice about this device is you can leave it on in the holster and then as you pull it out it will turn itself on. So that being said, it's actually a pretty nice option. Now what about regular non-law enforcement usage case scenarios? If you live in a state that is not a gun-friendly state, so for example, let me think back to when I, you know, lived under the communist regime of California. In California, any case that you have that you're going to go ahead and, 
You know, there, there's not gonna, you're not going to get dismissed right off the bat. If someone breaks in your house, you're going to court. It's period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no, it was self-defense. That's the end of this case. You know, the, the, the cops investigate things in the case. That doesn't happen in a lot of other states. In Texas, uh, we have a castle doctrine law, so our laws are drastically different. Um, if you break into someone's house, we have no uh, requirement to look for alternate means of... Uh, fleeing our own house, trying to go out the back door uh, to avoid a confrontation with someone who breaks into our house. Uh, Castle Doctrine means there is no requirement to retreat. Um, however, in other states you don't have that. So think about this. Uh, if you live in California and uh, you can, of course, it has a regular power on button. You don't need a special holster. But I mean, if I lived in California, this, this whole incident would go down like, it would sound like a Blair Witch Project. Um, I would dictate every single little thing. It's like, you know, oh my God, it's 1239, the alarm just went off, um, you know, I'm looking at the first floor, I'm so scared, whatever. Say whatever you want. Um, the key thing is you are creating a documentary of your incident with this camera. So if you're talking about uh, going to court or whatever, and, you know, they're seeing all this video, you know, they're seeing probably a bunch of shaky video and stuff. Um, they're hearing your voice, they're hearing, they're seeing the whole incident of what's unfolding. Um, you can create that level of fear um, to help someone else understand the scenario that you're in when someone's breaking in your house. So it's actually a great way of being able to defend yourself if you live in one of those particular types of states. So the price, um, it's, not an, it's, not, uh, it's not cheap. However, if you live in a state which is a, uh, you know, which, you know, the gun laws are against you as a, you know, law-abiding citizen, the $699, $700 this thing cost is actually very worth it. Uh, keep in mind, it's the cost of the gun pretty much too. So you're doubling the cost of any gun that, you know, regular home defense style gun. But uh, I think it's an excellent legal defense option. Um, in fact, if any of my viewers who live in states or countries or whatever who um, don't have uh, pro-gun laws like we do here in Texas, um, this is a great option. Um, I would strongly recommend you look into this. Yes, it does cost a few bucks, but I think it's worth every dime of it. Um, especially, you'll feel it's worth every dime of it if you actually have to actually utilize a gun for uh, self-defense and you've got some defense attorney who's trying to um, you know, make the guy who broke into your house who had all intention of killing your family sound like uh, you know, he's a uh, you know, Joe Good Citizen, you know, working at the soup kitchens and uh, donating uh, money to the homeless or whatever. So what you have to understand is what is that incident going to look like when you actually go to court and they try to paint the criminal in a light and try to turn you into the criminal for defending yourself. So this option here is a great way of really being able for a jury to see what really happened in the incident. So. Um, that being said, if you have any questions, please email me at info at civiliantacticalweapons.com and I hope to see you in a future episode.